Appreciate everyone being here. It's uh, good to be back again at S4. I think this is my eighth year in a row speaking, so thanks to Dale as well. A, a little overview about this talk. Um, it's we have all these gadgets and gadgets that a lot of the conference uh, uh, has over the years been talking about network security monitoring, all these sensors. Um, what we're going to talk about is how to detect these threats, but the problem is you have these alerts and alarms, and we don't know what to do with them. There's no blog posts about this. There's no papers about this. So how do you go about doing this? So we're going to talk about uh, the overview here uh, for the talk. Uh, remember, threats and risks aren't going away. Uh, we're going to have a section on detection talk about philosophy of tuning. Security alert engineering is similar to ICS alarm engineering. Has anyone ever uh, been an engineer for a control system and had to do tuning? Anyone? Okay. Um, we're going to dig into the ISA 18.2 and EEMUA 191 alarm management standards, and we're going to uh, apply those to network security monitoring sensors for control systems. And then we're going to get into a little bit about the NIST SP800-94 uh, standards on tuning um, IT systems. And there, we're going to apply some of those technologies and techniques uh, to tuning ICS as well. And then lastly, uh, what's good about detection without response? You have to have a response. So I'll briefly talk about incident response playbooks and following your plan. Ultimately, knowing your systems is the most powerful, powerful tool to operate and defend your system. Uh, how does my system work? What are my threats and risks of all types, not just cyber? Do I have enough visibility? And do I practice my plans? So keep this in the back of your mind. Knowing your system is the most powerful. So a little recap, uh, some of my colleagues that spoke last year, um, uh, Sarah Flukes uh, from uh, Germany, she had layered blueprints for OT security. If you haven't watched her talk uh, on YouTube, I have a link there in her paper. Security needs to be engineered, just like the control systems are engineered. We can't just let, uh, you just put in anything without thought. So she presented this really great uh, a watch, a light tower uh, design model for uh, engineering control systems. And then Nathan Wallace spoke here on stage two about uh, making power systems cybersecurity part of the engineering process. So those are uh, some of the building things that we have. The talk uh, yesterday from Jake Brodsky about securing PLC coding, building engineering into security, not building security into engineering. We're going to do it the other way around. So here's the problem with ICS security alert management. There's a little published about it. Asset owners have to learn by doing things. Just like Jake said yesterday, we're not taught this. It's not published. There's no books. There's no blogs. There's no nothing. So here's the theory. ICS alarm management is well-defined. IT uh, alert management is well-defined. ICS security alert management must be engineered by combining both of these uh, theories and practices. So let's create a reference that standardizes and combines these key concepts from both to empower ICS security teams and asset owners. So a couple of, uh, about a month ago, Rob Lee and little Bobby uh, posted this, and he was trying to steal my thunder but I don't think he knew I was giving this talk. So let's get some network visibility, a more secure, reliable, and safe environment. What are your goals? Great, and what, might, what you think about the in-state deliverables with that scenario that impact those goals. Think about the in-state and work backwards. Make sure your response scenarios are just supported by detection and collection strategies. So he's getting to the right point. You have to have an end goal, which is the engineering part, and engineer the detection and response strategies. And then we're going to talk about that. So is anyone familiar with uh, ISC 18.2? 
Anyone? Oh, we got a few people. Okay. Um, the primary function within alarm systems is to notify operators of abnormal process conditions or equipment malfunctions and support the response. So if we look at this uh, uh, alarm system data flow, it should make sense. Now, if you're an engineer for control systems, if you're a security IT professional, I added the, uh, overlaid the um, security logs piece and sending those security logs to the SIM or your SOC, if you're a SOC analyst. So you can see where we can take ISA 18.2 and already kind of poured it over into and you reuse it and repurpose it for uh, tuning alerts for the SOC. And this is very, uh, this is kind of the gist of everything. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> NIST SB894, if you look at the uh, you know, intrusion detection, I won't read the whole thing. It, it's very similar into the definition of the function within the alarm systems management. So if we look, we have the sensors in level zero, sending sensors data up to the operator HMI, uh, alarms external, um, you have your historian, you just overlay that. Grab whatever um, logs may be available in your SIS. Maybe the uh, user logs or the event logs or the error warning logs. SIS, PLCs, uh, RTUs already have these built in. And send them in to your security log box that's separate. Just like your alarm concentrator. So it's basically in that same key concept. And, and HMI, it already has Windows event logs, Windows security logs, and probably antivirus logs. And you could send those up and correlate all that together. Where should you collect and where should you detect? Threats and risks, define the goals that little Bobby was talking about, um, and drive your security alert philosophy. So operations, the key goal there is monitor the process and assets safety, regulatory, whatever other KPIs you might have. Security wants to monitor network and assets for malicious activity, safety. Ultimately, you can't see where you aren't looking. So if you're looking with the alarm process, that's what we've been doing since we've been engineering uh, control systems since day one. Um, when we do for engineering forensics and root cause analysis, we have to rely on those alarm logs from the system. And that's how we piece together the forensics, what happened. Like after the Super Bowl uh, blackout, that I, I got a phone call. Was it cyber? Um, let's start looking in the logs. So I had to throw open my laptop. Uh, Patrick Miller's laughing because he said, he tweeted, get to work, sis trunk. <laughs> <laughs> you have to dig into the, lo the logs and see what happened. And you might even have to pull the SCADA uh, historian and, and, and see exactly what happened. Um, after the 2003 blackout, there wasn't enough, uh, one of the key uh, recommendations from that uh, report, there wasn't enough forensics data in the logs. So they had these wigwag charts that were pins that would write, you know, what megawatts, megavars, and voltages was going. But that doesn't get down to the millisecond level. It's like per day or half a day or maybe in an hour. Um, so there was no way to figure out the root cause. So the, the forensics piece, you, you had to do the uh, more detailed fault records and more uh, di uh, distri uh, uh, digital fault recorders that looked at the system and put sensors in the network. Now, same with the security side. You can't do forensics if you don't have any of that information. So you have to do digital forensics. They're brothers and sisters. Root cause analysis, engineers know that. So when we talk about security in control systems, it might make sense to say engineering root cause analysis includes digital forensics too. So when they called me and said, is it cyber? We had to rule that out. Was it cyber? At that time, no, it was not cyber. It was a really a misoperation that was uh, 
uh, found by uh, all of the relay engineers that did the root cause analysis. But we had to consider, was it cyber? So this alert philosophy, you have to define your basic definitions and tie those to your operational definitions. Based on the objectives and principles for alarm systems. So let's move that down into create a document for your ICS security alert philosophy. Define your security operations for your control system. Define specific alert categories and priorities. Define and measure metrics because the, you know, the, the common saying is you can't uh, manage what you don't measure. If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. I manage it. So align these existing philosophies between your IT alerts and your ICS alarms and also your IT security alarms as well and your IC, uh, IT security alerts. So EEMUA is a similar standard to ISA 18.2, mainly used in uh, the UK and uh, mainly used in oil and gas and chemical. So it's uh, Engineering Equipment and Materials Users Association. This checklist is free, so I'll put the um, uh, link to it below. Um, the standard and the ISA standard are not free. They're not terribly expensive. So you should be able to get those with your work budget if you need it, if you don't have it already. But now what I did was just simply, let's change alarm system. Clearly define the intention of the alarm system. Let's do the alert system for the security, network security monitoring sensors. And basically you just overlay anything else, like just define any technical terms you use, IOC, indicators of compromise. Engineers don't know that today most likely in, in the real world, um, but we can define that so they'll know what they're talking about. Network attack, sandworm, what does all that stuff mean? An engineer may not understand those terms. When the uh, engineer understands security as being in bounds, not as cybersecurity, we still have that issue in the real world today. Lay out the methodology for managing your uh, alert systems. Uh, management of change, anytime a system is changed, especially on the network. The setting of incident priorities, guidance on the selection of rule settings, so all the uh, SNORT rules and the Suricata rules or uh, any of the manufacturers that's, and the vendors that's out there uh, on the, uh, on the uh, sponsor stage, all of their products that do all this stuff too. Uh, and they probably have a, a process for you know, tuning those alarms, tuning those alerts, and make sure that you... Um, tune those things, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then all, all the way down to training and auditing. It's really important to have that in your policy for your uh, ICS philosophy. So here's uh, another graphic from uh, ISA 18.2. It has the audit and philosophy loop. So if you, if you don't have an uh, ICS security tuning alert philosophy, you really don't have any rhyme or reason to finish the rest of the cycle because this has already been done by engineers when they built the alarm system, when they had to tune it. So you identify what you have, your rationalization, like what Sarah Flukes talks about. You have to have the engineering rationalization of why you built that, the engineering part of the system. Uh, detailed design, implementation. So that's really that lighthouse uh, piece that was in Sarah's talk. And your management of change is important. Anytime you change it, you have to have a reason. Now, monitoring and maintenance, we overlay the security ops and tuning and hunting uh, over the other uh, uh, loops that was in the system. Um, so this 18.2 um, uh, and the audit, uh, it's, it's still important. But this whole process, it's a circular um, cycle and every time you have a new change, any time you have a new requirement, uh, a new threat, a new sensor, uh, we added a new piece to the network. Um, you know, we've, we found some new IOCs from like ICS search, CISA send out, a, uh, there's a campaign uh, targeting your system. I mean, you have to inject that into your uh, design, your implementation. 
so you're in your security ops, all the way down to hunting and auditing. So keep that in mind as you build out your philosophy. Um, now, a recap from uh, S415 talk. NSM collection, uh, um, for those who may not know, um, basically you're taking different collectors and putting them in your uh, control system network. So you have uh, network sensors, which is you know your switches and uh, you might be able to do a span port. Hopefully you're familiar with that. Uh, or getting some uh, firewall uh, alerts. Um, also, your, uh, in your DMZ, your SCADA DMZ or ICS DMZ, you have enterprise collectors that may be there, like antivirus or an agent, security agent. Um, those are starting to be more common now. Um, it's more problematic to put them down in the plant level. So HMIs, you may only have existing logs. Um, some control systems are starting to put agents in there like antivirus and, and, and um, other incident response type agents. And then down in the control le level, you have logs only. So the user log, the event log, the error log, all these things that you can collect. Some PLCs have syslog. On the NSM detection piece, you know, it takes these detected anomalies and escalates it in their IR process. So what alerts are there? What anomalies are there? Firmware updates, you know, uh, login with default credentials or uh, devices going online or offline or you got uh, team viewer trying to beacon out and is actually, a com uh, you know, an active connection. Those things that you have to think about in your collection and detection. So tuning. Uh, create and refine reliable IDS rules. Now, when you first turn on uh, your system, you're going to have to tune it just like you tune an engine. It may not run right, right out of the box. You're going to have to work on it. So actively managing your ICS network sensors is, is really important. Uh, has anyone ever seen this uh, alarm management graph um, going from the you know, plant state normal to disturb, to upset, to shut down? And nuisance alarms, standing alarms, critical alarms. Operator priority is over here, and you have uh, nuisance alarms, uh, not so bad, not going to hurt the plant. Uh, these critical alarms could shut down the plant. That's the kind of rationale here. You have in injuries and deaths, emergency shutdown, cut in, uh, environmental violations like a, a release of uh, chemicals. Um, now, part of that standard is uh, from this uh, blog post here uh, at automation.com. Uh, white paper on alarm monitoring management, keeping the peace and quiet. So, really great article. I just, uh, hope you go read it. This also, this graph was how many number of alarms per hour can the operator do? So, same thing. A security analyst can only handle so many alerts that come in. Is a critical alert lost in a mountain of nuisance alerts? Think about it. Same with uh, on a control system. If you have too many alarms, SCADA alarms, the operators are not going to trust it. They may even go into manual mode. They won't trust the system. So you have to apply the same thing that we did with the engineering of the control system alarm management. We can port that over directly to security uh, management. So reducing nuisance alerts is important. How many of you have ever installed a network monitoring system and like like de, like bro? I know Blake has a turn on default thing. Everything bro, it alerts on everything. Like especially like DMP3, for instance. Um, when you turn it on, it doesn't care if it's good or bad. It alerts on every single DMP3 message. That's just too much. You don't want to alert on everything. So it becomes noise. So here's a, a graph from ChemicalProcessing.com article by specific, uh, doing a, 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 an analysis of before they reduce their nuisance alarms and then after. I don't have a graph uh, for this for any ICS NSM tuning because I haven't uh, worked at an uh, asset owner uh, a long enough time to, to be able to get this data. Um, if I still worked at the power company, I would already have the data, but, uh, you know, I'm going from place to place as a consultant. So hopefully you will be able to do this if you have an ICS NSM. And when they reduce the alarms, you could 
see the big spike in actual um, data. So in the top, um, the process alarms the operator's actions. Now, at the, after they reduce the uh, alarms, the operator's actions match the alarms. There's a cause and effect. Now, here's another one from um, the National Fire Protection Guides for reducing nuisance alarms in, you know, how many has been in a hotel and the fire alarm goes off and they're like, eh, nothing happened, some kid just pulled the alarm or it was a, a candle, you know, went out, just one little candle and it, the little tiny bit of smoke set off the whole thing. Um, so really have to avoid the uh, false alarms uh, so we can more trust the system. This is a study from um, the UK where they had residential smoke alarm uh, presentation uh, on reducing alerts. So we can take what we learned from that as well. Now I have a GIF. It's supposed to be uh, going, but um, it's waves and waves and waves of emails. So you installed it. It's collecting data, but now you're overwhelmed with all these alerts. Um, I have an example. I went to a client of ours that had bought two uh, network security monitoring sensors and installed them in their control system. They were the ICS and one of the vendors out here. I won't say who it is because it doesn't matter. They didn't tune anything. They just took it out of the box, put it in, and when we got on site to do our work, we noticed that basically these things were not tuned. There was over 800,000 active security alerts that had not been addressed and the baselining feature, uh, feature wasn't used. For instance, there was a, a mesh radio system that they had, and part of the technology with the mesh radio system is um, to find the best path, they'll sometimes change IP addresses, and it happens uh, thousands of times per day. They didn't tune any of that out. They didn't tune uh, any of the MAC addresses. There's like only 100 radios. They could have put all 100 uh, MAC addresses into the Learn database and eliminated all those nuisance alarms um, and again, Bro and Zeke, by default, alerts on every function code. Um, and uh, Richard Bailick, uh excellent resource on all things related to network security monitoring. He tweeted in uh, November, uh, just remind you that Bro, now Zeke, doesn't look for bad traffic. It's inherently policy neutral. So you have to craft which alerts are there. So collect them all. <laughs> Remember Beanie Babies? <laughs> um, it's not good to collect them all if you don't have a, uh, a philosophy. So false positives still cause threat alert fatigue. This is an article from CSO Online. And Target missed an early alert of credit card data breach. So they had too much data coming in on the IT uh, SOC. And they missed the one key alert. So we already know that this is an issue with IT. Your IT SOC analysts, they have to stay on top of this because they'll miss what happened. So there's a couple of articles, uh, CSO Online and Reuters, uh, that talk about this in detail. This is a use case for us in ICS uh, security uh, alarm management. So just don't collect everything just because you can. You have to engineer the process. Anybody heard about true positive, false positive, false negative, true negative? Uh, Mubix uh, tweeted this, and it's a great reference from the developer's Google uh, guide on machine learning. So false positive, false negatives, all the um, learning modes and all the ICS sensors, they try to reduce, reduce the uh, false negatives and the false positives. So uh, if you don't know what it is, it's like a wolf is threatened. Shepard said wolf. How come shepherd is a hero? So that's a true positive. True negative, uh, no wolf threatened. Shepherd said no wolf, everybody's fine. That's the two goals that we want. False positive, no wolf threatened. Shepherd cried wolf. Villagers are angry at the shepherd for waking them up. And false negative, reality, a wolf threatened. Shepherd said no wolf and uh, wolf ate all the sheep. Uh, we have to think about those things as we're building 
our control system security monitoring system. Same way we do with the ICS uh, alarms. Um, because if there's false negatives and false positives on the control system, the operators, again, they won't trust the system. And they'll go back into manage, uh, managing it in manual mode if, have, if they have to, or shut part of the process down. So a recap, where do we start last year at the on-ramp? You have to start small. Start with what you have and who you already have. You don't need to go buy all the sensors and put them all in everywhere. No, start with the key ingress, egress points. And maybe collect and make you know, 10 alerts that are really good for what your process is. It's a continuum. You use what you have until you need more. So crawl, walk, run, and fly. Don't overwhelm yourself right off the bat and measure what you're doing. It's really important to have that. Um, sock, sock analysts. Any sock analysts here, go buy donuts for the ICS engineers. Work together to define the ICS alert philosophy. Use your existing ICS alarm and sock alert standards and kind of marry them together. If you don't have them, Use ISA 18.2 or EEMUA 191 or NIST SB 894 as a guide. The NIST is free, the, the other two are not, but they're not expensive. Um, start with the ICS DMZ firewall and other ingress egress points and create the alerts for those. Choose the existing logs. You don't have to go buy new things, use what you have. Leverage your vendors during the install process because they're the experts on their equipment. Say, we need your help to tune these things and teach us. Give us a miniature training or give us a full week training on it. Um, also, don't put the ICS security alerts in the HMI. We don't need the operators that are trying to do their job to be uh, doing the ICS SOC uh, uh, analyst job too. So we want to make sure that we're not uh, doing it just because we can. Um, shout out to uh, uh, Mark Ayala for, you know, reminding me of that. And I agree, uh, you know, we don't need to overwhelm them um, on what they already do. So well, now we're going to get into playbooks. Um, I'm a Saints fan, lifelong, and you see everything that... Uh, Coach Sean Payton has every situation, every look that the offense and defenses has with their op opponents, he has a play already uh, cooked up, and they practice it. So playbooks and use cases are important for control systems, and you have to tie all of these alarms and alerts together in the engineering that you do in your philosophy. So have a, a commodity malware playbook and use case. So what will happen if config or remnant gets on your system? Um, what if your credentials are compromised and um, all the passwords are stolen? What are you going to do about it? Destructive attack is another one. If you have kill disk or uh, destructive, not Patriot type uh, malware overriding the firmware and your, your uh, serial to Ethernet, just like Jason Larson was talking about, um, we have to be able to, what do we do about it? What's our play that we're going to run, coach? And then stopping the bleeding, you know, where do you pull the plugs between your you know, VPN or your connections to the outside world? Um, remediation for each play. So that play should have a remediation for each one. And the alerts should have a tie to each one of these. So what do you do? Restore backups, reset passwords, et cetera. So run your play. Design plays for each phase, practice these drills, use your player strengths because you know the system better than the attacker knows the system or the threat. It could be someone made a mistake at 5 o'clock on Friday. That's still a threat. How do we get around that? The new guy, oops, he made a mistake. Let's get back online. Fin exploit their weaknesses. Again, you know more than they do about your own network. And then finish strong. Knowledge is the most powerful tool. Know and harden your network. Know and tune the network visibility. If you don't have enough visibility, get more visibility. And know what to do when an incident occurs. I'll just leave this slide up for uh, those of you who like uh, references. I reference the ISA, 
uh, standards. Um, there's an excellent blog post uh, from Rockwell Automation. Um, there's excellent um, handbook from uh, PAS. Uh, I, I don't uh, know if you know Eddie Habibi. They wrote a really great book on alarm management handbook. I'm going to talk to Eddie and see if they can come out with maybe a new book on we can collaborate together. All of us in the community create an ICS security alarm and alert standard as well. I think we need to do that um, as, a, as a community. And here's a slides on IC, uh, security alert management. So all the NIST and security onion, tuning, alerts, uh, the bro uh, configuration and tuning, the developer's Google uh, page, and then applied network security monitoring from uh, Chris Sanders. Um, and then uh, security engineering, that's um, from Sarah. Thank you. A a any, t any questions? Looks like we have a question. Hi, Chris. Hey. Great presentation. I think that's a brilliant idea of rationalizing ICS security alerts using uh, industrial standards. Now, um, false positives are pretty easy to identify and tune. False negatives are a lot more challenging. How would you recommend tuning and identifying false negatives in an industrial environment? Well, as you know, I know you work for uh, uh, one of these companies. You have to engineer it. You can't just make an alert and say, oh, let's put it in production. No, you have to test it. Run a PCAP. Can you verify that it works? And is it an alert on many things? Or can you uh, make it really specific on some, some thing, where it's a t technical piece of your network or a design in your, your protocol? or any of these things, you have to think about it that way and test it. Thank you. That's something that certainly uh, the vendors do and we do, but from a customer perspective, once it's deployed, yes. what, what would you recommend? It, it can be difficult to run a PCAP through a live ICS network. Yes. So uh, what I tell all asset owners, you have to have a test system before you just willy-nilly deploy it. So do the same thing. Get a PCAP from your live system, replay it, through the test system and test it out. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Mr. Jake. Mr. Chris. Very good presentation. Thank you. Um, question is how do you coordinate between the ICS side, the, the, the actual control system side, and when they get a security alert? For example, um, if somebody's doing a firmware update, the security system should start flashing all kinds of interesting alerts. But Let's say there's nothing scheduled and it starts flashing interesting alerts. Maybe the operators forgot to talk. How do we coordinate these sides so that they talk to each other and you get this kind of collaboration going on? Because unless they're in the same room, chances are they're not going to hear about it. Absolutely. So that's why I mentioned those teams should work together in their alarm philosophy with the security team. You know, and working with the engineers, the technicians, and the, the operators. And your incident response playbook, you should have your, your, all your different players and their contact information listed. Even um, the, what department heads they are. If this happens, we have to involve this group of people. And it can't be cylinders of excellence, you know, the right hand not talking to the left hand. Uh, you have to have that cross pollination. And, you know, in some big companies that could be problematic. In smaller companies, like where you came from, you were probably both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. So it really takes uh, a lot of thought and engineering into it um, and getting some cross pollination and um, th that, uh, that's why I mentioned the donuts. So. <laughs> <laughs> donuts yeah. help. Kalachis, if you're in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and one follow-up question. Um, I talked earlier about internal self-consistency diagnostics that the operators might want to know about. How would you get that information in front of the security people in case there happens to be something coincident going on their side? 
Yes, so that's where you need to have some trained people on both sides. So have that um, uh, someone that's a SOC analyst. If you can't dedicate a, one person to be the ICS security expert on your SOC analyst team, get them some training on what, they, uh, what those processes are, and then have a way to uh, look at it. There may be a way to take those uh, logs from the SCADA system, sending them to the SOC, and see maybe some basic statistics, because a lot of these uh, SIMs and uh, those tools, they'll take logs from any source. So yeah. we had that, at, at, when I worked at the power company, we had uh, some, uh, some an analytics type data coming into the security system to see. Um, also, even physical security. So if you go out to a substation, you're supposed to check in. The door alarm should uh, should work, and then. But if you see someone uploading firmware and the door alarm's, you know, not there, and the, uh, someone hasn't called and checked in, we're going to roll trucks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And no problem. Hey, I really love the idea of integrating your your sys data into the sim and actually having kind of a hybrid view of it all. Um, are there any examples? That you could that come to mind readily about correlations between the two. Like, is it common that you'll see a cyber incident that corresponds to CPU utilization or something that affects a particular thing to look for in the sys? So one of the things you could do is take um, the ICS alarm metrics. So how many alarms are they getting per minute? Just like that graph that shows the alarms coming in. You can, uh, just like CPU usage, you can grab that in, but get how many alarms per minute are coming in to, um, to the, the ICS network. And you could correlate that with the ICS security alerts or the IT security alerts to see if there's anything lining up. Um, that, that would be my suggestion. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Chris. My, uh, my company performs alarm rationalization studies, and we've been talking about applying the techniques just as you have to, uh, to rationalizing uh, network security uh, alerts. One question I have for you, um, you know, typically when you do an alarm rationalization, one of the first things you do is you get a dump of the, uh, the, uh, the master alarm database. Yes. So you have all, those, uh, all the alarms that you can then start rationalizing. In this case, how would you get a list of all the potential alarms that can come out of a network security monitoring tool. Yeah, so th there's a way to do that. Um, again, it depends on the tool and how proprietary it is to the vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, some are more open. Uh, if you, I would actually say work with the vendor of those, yeah. um, or uh, if it's more open source like, um, like Bro or Zeek, uh, there's ways to uh, pull that list out. They have a whole list of all the alerts in their database. So um, like uh, like Digital Bond, they released the uh, some alerts that they wrote as part of a grant, and they have a whole list that uh, it, so it's basically printing out the text file, mm -hmm. uh, um, and ha basically having a menu of what al uh, alerts are available and are they active or not? Are they disabled? Right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. No problem. Well, I got one probably last question. Um, you said first point is create an alarm management philosophy. Um, what are the people you envision sitting around the table for that? What is the knowledge you need for that? So I, I would say you have your subject matter experts that's in the, the say, the asset owner that is the, the lead engineer, the lead uh, on the control system. I would also have someone from the control system vendor that's uh, an engineer or subject matter expert on that. Not a marketing person or you know sales or you know one of those people. Actually, someone that helps them tune the ICS. Uh, then I would have some of the key people from the security alert, I mean, uh, SOC SOC analyst team, and you just put them in a room and say, "Don't come out until you get it done. <laughs> we'll buy you pizza." <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. We appreciate your work, too. All right. I think that's it for questions. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.